it's going to change. So what I will do here is I'm going to show you the first couple of lessons. The idea in this class is I'm just going to work through the first um, two lessons just to give you a feel for what this will look like. Uh, I'm definitely not a professional educator, so you'll, you'll do a way better job than me, but uh, I also know you won't judge me too harshly either. So uh, give me a second here and I'm just going to I have a bunch of screens going here. Uh, let me come to uh, the first thing I'm going to show you. So let's take me a moment here while I find what I'm looking for. Um, okay. Actually, uh, the very first one, I, I don't think I need code at all. So we'll, we will talk about the programming environment. So again, let's just revisit the robot that I've built. You can imagine that I've built my Lego-y looking robot. I have my game controller. And this is going to be hard to see. So when you go through this on your own, um, you'll have a much easier time. But what I can do again is I'll make sure the robot is turned on. So the robot is on, white screen. I'll hit the little check mark, turn the robot on, the screen's up. Uh, you'll be able to see the display, my monitor's too bright. But if you could see my monitor, uh, what, you will, what we would see here uh, going back to, if I share my screen, is when you first turn on the uh, robot's brain, you'll have all of your computer programs listed, which those thus far, we have no programs on the robot. We haven't programmed anything, so there will be nothing underneath programs. But there'll be an option called driver control. And so you'll use the directional arrows up and down here to select driver control and press the check mark. This is just a program that lets you drive the robot without any programming at all. So the robot will essentially behave like an RC car. So here, what you do not see on my screen is I'm gonna use the directional arrows to select the option that says driver control. I'm gonna hit the check mark button uh, to launch to initiate the program. And then there's another option here. It says, do you wanna run the program? So I'll hit the check mark, which is my enter button again, one more time. And now with my controller, I can drive the robot. It's gonna be tricky trying to do this all on webcam, but we'll see. So I'm just using the, the joystick and the way this robot is set up is that the left joystick controls the left side of the robot, which we can see, I think, and the right joystick controls the right side of the robot. Now, if you build one of those more advanced robots that we saw earlier, there will be other motors. So you might have a motor for the claw, like the robot has a little arm that can uh, that grab things. And so these other buttons can be used to open and close the claw and grab objects. In fact, your kits will come with some game cubes. Uh, so if you get to the more advanced builds and you want to try grabbing and manipulating physical objects, you'll be able to do that from the controller. This robot is pretty simple. It just has two motors. Um, this is a good place to talk about the motors. So this is what the mo robot's motors actually look like. And there's an interesting uh, piece of information here. You'll see the VEX logo and you'll see this circle uh, with an arrow going around it. That's showing the axis of rotation for the motor, right? So if this, if, if, if we're using the robot the way I have it currently built, the, the axis of rotation is gonna be horizontal, which is gonna cause a wheel to move either forwards or backwards. If this motor is mounted upright, then we can have the axis of rotation mounted vertically. So we might use the motor in this way to make an arm go up and down. One thing we cannot see in the robot that I've built is we have these two motors, but um, they're actually mirrored versions of each other. So the way the robot's built is the two motors are pressed against each other, so we can't see that logo. So when we go to program the robot, uh, we will have to be mindful that one of these motors is actually upside down. And so we're going to program it a little bit differently, uh, just so that when the robot is being controlled with both of the game controllers going forward, that the robot moves in a way that we expect it to. We'll talk about this in great detail in a couple of minutes, but this was just a great place to bring up the idea uh, while I'm holding the motors. The motor's pretty simple. It's just a hole that you can put things into. So here, here's like a metal shaft. Here's the, the hole. And if, when the robot, when the shaft is in the hole, it will make a real crunchy kind of sound, which you probably won't hear, but I hope you can hear the sound of something crunching. 
that's the sound of the of the shaft being inside of the motor. So that's a good sound. That means that when the robot's on, it's going to turn the shaft, which will spin the wheel, which will do magical things for you. If you're able to uh, put the shaft in and it doesn't make that crunchy sound, what will happen is the wheel will spin. Of course, that, that will work. But when the robot's motor gets power, it's not going to be able to grab that shaft that's inside of here. And so it's not going to do anything. So sometimes it's the case that if your robot is not moving, like you're programming it to move and you hear it doing something, but nothing's working, just take a, take a look at your shafts here and just give it a good push in. A trick, sometimes it's hard to press on the shaft using your hand. It can be a little, it can hurt a little bit. So one of the cheats is Vex says you can use one of the other pieces and just use it to squish down. So here you can see I'm using uh, this as, a, as leverage to push a, another component on. Oops. And that's just, a, that's just a tip you'll learn the hard way. You'll have a, it, ha it happens always the case that um, one student says, I don't get it. I, I built my robot. I programmed it to move. I can hear it doing something, but the motor, the wheel isn't spinning. And the answer is always, have you checked to make sure that that shaft is in all the way and you can hear that crunchy grinding noise. Um, so before I talk about the programming environment, we'll just hang out here to talk about driving the robot with the game controller. Any questions about that? No. Yeah, I think you'll see it's pretty straightforward. It, it behaves like an RC car. So let's talk about the programming environment then. Um, all of you will have on the Chromebook, uh, and I'll have to go into a share screen again. So uh, depending on, on, I think it's the case that the application will be on the, will be pinned to the taskbar at the bottom of the Chromebook. If you cannot find it for whatever reason, just go into the launcher here. And in the launcher, you'll find an application called Robot Mesh Studio App. And so in this case, whether I launch it from here or from here, it doesn't matter. I'll just open this up. And it is now the case that we are in the programming environment. Now, before I get too far ahead of myself, is it the case, Shirley, that you can see my programming environment? Yes. Okay, excellent. Because this will be, this is definitely the part where you want to be able to follow along. So let's talk about this um, app. So again, as I said earlier, um, this is a custom version of our public facing software. The key difference between the public version and this app is the public version is designed to be used online. So if some of you did the uh, simulated exercises this past summer uh, or the summer previously, you were using the online version of it. This um, application does not need an internet connection. So we do not assume that you have Wi-Fi access. Um, what we see here on the right hand side are all of the sample projects. So if we go back into the teacher's guide, usually at the end of a lesson, it will say, oh, and if you want to see a working version of this, then click on um, robotfreezetag.rms. And so let's just open this. I've clicked it. Now, this is a read only version of this file. Uh, so you cannot edit it. You cannot do anything to it. You may want to um, play with the screen sizing. So the Chromebook typically has a smaller display than what I'm using. So we can see here that there are um, little boundaries that I can drag so I can make this bigger. I can actually make all of these screens bigger, smaller. There's a little hot button. So there's, you can see there's a little yellow widget that lights up. And if I click on that, that just minimizes or will minimize the display. So you may want to have more screen real estate than um, what you're afforded. If you to get these screens back, again, there's these, the little hot button here. If I click on it, it comes back. Um, in the bottom right corner of the editor is a uh, magnify magnification. So zoom in and out. So if I want to get closer, maybe I have this hooked on a display. We can make this really big. If we do not supply it in the kits, but actually if you, the, the, um, Chromebooks have a USB-C port, so if you buy an HDMI to USB-C adapter, you'll be able to plug your Chromebook into a display or into a, a projector. And so some teachers that want to have a, um, uh, a version going on a, on, a, on a smart board or something like that will have that USB-C to HDMI adapter, plug it in, and then they'll just make this really big so that they can see what's going on. Uh, if, you, if you click this button here, it will just scale to fit, so now it's the right size. On the right hand side is you'll see the numbers one through 12, which roughly correlates to the numbered ports on the brain. So I'll just stop sharing again so we can see this. 
So we saw here on my robot that uh, it's really faint to see, but there's, there's, there's numbered ports. And so what we would find here, if we go back to the program, programming environment uh, is that the numbered ports on the side uh, correlate with what's plugged into the robot. So in this particular instance, I have on port number one, I have my left motor. On port number two, I have a distance sensor, I have a color sensor, a gyro sensor, so on and so forth. Now, <clears throat> an important... What will happen here is if I want to run my sample code, like so if I want to use this solution to demonstrate how this program works, I will plug the robot in. So I will, I, I, there's a micro USB cable that you will plug into the Chromebook, which will allow you um, to transfer your code from the Chromebook to the robot. Here we have a play button. <coughs> so pressing the play button will cause the program to execute. Um, if it's a program that causes the robot to drive around, you may want to put the robot on the ground and not be tethered. So a second option you have is from this drop down menu, you can download the program. And then what will happen is from the robot's little computer, the one with the directional arrows and the check mark and the X, you will select the program. Here we can see the program's name. So this program is called robot underscore freeze underscore tag RMS. So that name will show up on the robot's brain once um, the program has been downloaded. Alternatively, if you decide just to run it while tethered, um, it will also be on the robot's brain, but then the robot will be moving in your hand uh, while you're holding it, which may or may not be ideal. Um, so let's take a look at um, a, a simple exercise just to get us started. So I'm gonna, this is a more advanced exercise. I don't wanna use this. Like, I'm gonna do something different here. So th these are the solution sets. If I want to create my own exercise, my own programming code from scratch, there's a button here that says create new local project. So when I create a new local project, a dialogue comes up. And normally, if you're using the public facing version of the software, you have lots of different robots that you can program because this is customized for full bloom. Uh, there's just one robot we can see here. It's the Vex IQ robot. <clears throat> There are three ways you can program the robot, um, only two of which are covered in the, in the lessons that are provided. Um, it's worth noting that Blockly code can generate Python. So if you wanna go really far and actually, excuse me, um, teach Python, you can program in Python natively. And you can also use the Blockly blocks to sh show you the, the Python that's generated. We're not gonna get into that today. What I'm gonna show you in these next two lessons is how to program the controller and how to make the robot move um, programmatically. So first, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna show you how to program the controller. We've already seen um, that we can use the default program uh, that is provided on the VEX IQ brain to run the controller. You might imagine a situation where you've built a more complicated robot. So now it has arms and a grabber and different things. And so maybe we wanna add a level of customization to how the robot responds to the controller. So here, for the programming language, I'll choose Controller Express. The options is usually, um, it, it, it usually just gives you a cutesy name. Um, so here I could give this a better name. I might call this, uh, you know, my demo controller, or you can accept the default names. Like the default name is usually something like Magical Horse or Happy Cow or something silly. Um, so here I'll just keep it as Magical Horse and I'll hit Create. And so now we're in the programming environment. You can see, and we'll talk about the controller in a second here, that there's buttons to map functionality to the controller buttons. You can see on the right-hand side, um, we have all of our ports. Now, at this point in time, the robot is not plugged into my computer, so nothing is showing. So let me break out of this to show you the physical connecting of the um, robot uh, to the computer. Um, I have a slightly different looking cable. So I have a big, long green cable that works for me, but you'll have a smaller black cable. Um, at one end of this cable, I'm using a USB port on my laptop. On the other end, I'm just gonna turn this all off just to make sure that we're starting clean here. So my robot's off. I take the little cable, the micro USB cable, there's a little hole here on the side and I'll put that in. Okay, so now we're plugged in. 
And now the two things we're going to do here is I'm going to go back to my program. Oh, while I'm here, I should show you that on the controller, uh, there's actually uh, letters and numbers that tell you what, what buttons are what letters. So when we go to do our uh, mapping of code to the controller, we'll be looking at these labels, but it's hard to see on the screen. But basically what's happening is we can map what direct the Y axis, so up and down on the joystick left or right. Uh, we can map the X axis left and right on both. And then there's buttons. So you can appreciate again that as the robot becomes more mechanically complicated, we have all sorts of configuration options, including buttons up here. Uh, for now, what I'm going to do is I'll go back into that screen share. And what we're going to do here, the very first step, which you can't see me do, is I'm going to hit the check mark to turn the robot on. Uh, turn it on. I'm going to turn the controller on, which again, you can't see. You'll have to uh, trust me that I'm doing it. So my controller and my robot are on. Here on the right-hand side, uh, there is an option to detect sensors. So I'll click on that option. And you see how when I did that, the uh, motors and sensors on the robot lit up. So it found the two motors, my left and right motor. It, my robot has some bumper sensors at the back. It also found the joystick uh, that we're using to, to drive our robot. So what we can do right now, and this is gonna be a little tricky, uh, so you'll bear with me while I move between screens. But I might be curious what these motors are, especially if, if I am using lots of motors, I might wanna test these out to figure out what, what parts of the robot move. So here I would hit the connect button. When I do that, there's a green band showing me that I'm connected and I can move a slider around. And so I've just moved this slider to make this motor spin and I'm gonna go out of the stop sharing my screen so you can see it. So now what I did by that, moving that slider, by being connected and moving that slider, I'm moving just the left side of my robot. The right side is doing nothing. Left side is moving. So what I might wanna do here is I might wanna come back and give that motor a name, a better name than motor one, so that when I'm programming it, I know what it is. I'll also, just the same way I can move the slider here. And now I'm making both the left and the right motors move um, again, I'll stop sharing so we can see this. So now one motor's moving. Now the other motor's moving. Now this is going to be hard to see, but the two motors are actually spinning in different directions. So if we look here, the motor is spinning clockwise, right? The wheels are spinning clockwise. On the other side, the wheels are spinning counterclockwise. And so remember, that's because these mo one of these motors is upside down, right? So we have to change the behavior of the right side of our robot. So again, I'm gonna go back to screen share. And the other, before I do that, you can see if I press the bumpers, um, then, they, then they light up. I'm just gonna hit disconnect to stop the robot. You can also hit this stop button up here. They both do the same thing. So now my robot's quiet, nothing's happening. And so what I saw is that this motor one is actually my left motor. So I'm gonna relabel it. I'm gonna call it motor left. So when I program it, I know what it is I'm controlling. I saw that motor right, uh, motor six is actually my right motor. And we, it was also the case that motor right uh, was the motor that was spinning in the wrong direction because it's upside down. So beside each of these ports uh, is a little gear icon, which allows you to set up or configure the device that's mapped to that port. So in this case, the motor on six, I'll click the, the little gear icon here and it says you're using a motor called motor right, that's fine. And under subtype, it says motor. If I change this to motor reverse polarity, what that's gonna do is it's gonna cause the, ro the robot to behave the opposite of how, it, how it's instructed. So right now, if the motor is going forwards, it's actually the motor's turning backwards because it's upside down. What we're gonna make happen here is <clears throat> for this motor, backwards is gonna become forwards and forwards is gonna become backwards. Um, I know that likely makes your head hurt thinking about it. Uh, so don't think about it, just do it. Uh, it. I'll click on this. So now it says motor reverse polarity. So now uh, when I program this robot, both of the motors are gonna spin the same way. The other thing I can do here is we were talking earlier about these lettered, um, these numbers and letters here on the controller. 
So what we see is we see we're going to start mapping functionality uh, to the different joysticks here. So let's start with the left joystick. It's likely the case that we want the left joystick to control the left motor on the robot. So what we can see is there's a, a label that says A as an alpha. And, and there's a little directional arrow, which is really hard to see, but it's up and down, telling us that when we move the joystick up and down on the A channel, we're, we're controlling that behavior. So here we see axis A in, in on the Y axis up and down. We're gonna add an action. The action you're almost always interested in is this first one called linear control, meaning that when the, ro we're, when the robot is pressed up, it's gonna move up. When the robot, when the joystick's pressed down, it's gonna move down. And then it's gonna say, okay, what motor am I controlling? When, we, when you, we move the A joystick up and down, what is it that we are driving? Well, the motor we're gonna control is the left motor. You can see how by labeling this and giving it a better name than motor one, uh, how it's gonna make programming this much easier. So now the left joystick is gonna drive the left motor. The right joystick, which is hard to see, is using the D channel, D as in David or Dan. Um, so here we'll find access D, add an action, and we'll go to the motor right. Now the lesson, the teacher's guide goes through all of this. So if you're like, wow, that's a lot of steps and I'll never remember it. Um, everything I just did is covered in great detail in, in the lesson. I'm just cheating a little bit by uh, jumping over the lesson. So now I'm pretty happy. I've programmed my robot. Again, if we had other functionality, other motors, we might do other things. But for now, this works. So I'm just going to hit the play button to connect and download my code. You can see at the bottom of the screen, it's downloading. And so it's 64, 75%, 99, 100. And now this green bar is telling me that the code is running. If I look at my um, joystick, and I'll have to stop sharing again, the, the, the um, robot is now running the program. It might be hard to see. And I can use the joysticks to drive this robot. So it says, okay. So that's how we can custom program the robot. Um, I'm just gonna hang out here for a second because uh, I know that was a lot of information to digest in a very short period of time. The first time I heard it, my brain hurt from listening to it. Um, and we'll just stop here for questions before we talk about autonomous programming. Uh, like I said, keep in mind that the, the book is quite thorough with describing the steps that I just went through. And this session is also being recorded, so you'll be able to come back to this video. Um, any questions about programming the controller? Yeah. Okay. It really is something you'll just play with. Um, and, and like I said, after you do it two or three times, you'll, you'll have it. Um, so I know it seems very complicated to internalize all those steps, but it does eventually come to you.